Previously on the final pitch. Multi-chain is the future, but there's a there's a tremendous amount of technical challenges, I think, with regards to sort of having one wallet that can service all of that. Use our platform. We'll provide the platform for you to do a meaningful proof of concept. And if you accept his offer, I'll I'll start with fifty thousand US. Um yes, I would like to accept your offer and thank you for the opportunity, sir. To be honest with you. I'm quite interested. I can connect you to more merchants because in our portfolio, we have so many brands. No? I'll make an offer right now at $100,000 at $3 million, if that's workable. I know it's a safe note anyway. Can we meet around $4 million valuation cap? Okay, let's okay. do it. Then I'll take it. <laughs> this week, we get to know more about the CEO of Coins.ph, Weijo. And day one of the pitches continues. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders on the lookout to fund and support the country's rising tech startups. Wei Zhou, CEO of Coins.ph. Francis Plaza, co-founder and CEO of PayMongo. Avin Om, founder and CEO of Fredly Group of Companies. Amor McClung, co-founder of Geyser McClung. Rose Ong, Senior Executive Vice President and COO of Wilkin Depot. And John Yunuschak, President and CEO of UBX. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. Coins.ph is a blockchain-backed platform in the Philippines that has gained the trust of more than 16 million users. With Wei's vast experience in various leading technology companies, Coins.ph is now poised for exponential growth across Southeast Asia. Coins.ph is the leading fiat crypto exchange here in the Philippines. We are licensed by the BSP, the central bank here, as a uh, cryptocurrency exchange. We're licensed as an e-wallet, and we're also licensed as a remittance player. So we actually sit under a regulated regime where we can provide basically e-money services, we can provide cryptocurrency services, and we can also re uh, provide remittance services. And we basically provide a very easy platform for users to uh, send money to each other. I think we have thousands of sort of uh, cash in ramps that you can sort of put money into. Uh, into coins and then once you have your sort of fiat into uh, the coins wallet uh, we have over 40 plus tokens you can choose from and we have probably you know the best prices in terms of local currency in terms of buying the crypto both in terms of uh, price in and then also uh, in terms of you do want to sell it we hope to give you a pretty good price in terms of selling it as well what's going to set us apart is that we're going to have a bigger selection of digital assets that our users can choose from. And then what we really want to add is basically we want to let coins be the uh, gateway into Web3 in terms of both NFTs, in terms of gaming, into metaverse um, for all of the users here uh, in the Philippines so that you can actually um, you know, start owning assets. There's you know, a lot of barriers to owning assets in the real world, but actually I think owning assets in the digital world and then actually getting yield and then generating return from those assets. But I think there's going to be more and more opportunities like that going forward and that, that's sort of the revolution of Web3 is uh, what I call the uh, ownership economy and then with ownership uh, I think that's actually going to unlock a really big creative economy and what I hope to do is basically put coins at the middle of that in that uh, not only do we allow you to own it uh, we allow you to earn from it and then we allow you to spend from it and then we allow you to invest your earnings uh, from it so I think that's what we hope to build coins into. I was actually born in China and I moved to the U.S. when I was 10 and a half. But then, uh, so I you know, did middle school, high school and college in the U.S. But then after college, I actually moved back to Asia. Moved quite a bit between you know, Beijing and then Hong Kong and then L.A. and then now I'm back in Asia. Being an immigrant, I think I was able to sort of, you know, not only uh, acclimate but actually assimilate and then thrive in different cultures. And then sort of moving from the U.S. back to Asia, I sort of had to like relearn sort of my bearings as someone who's actually returning to Asia, not as an Asian, but kind of as an American. But I feel sort of, you know, a mix of everything right now. And then uh, having sort of like raising my kids in Southeast Asia today, I feel like, you know, it's very dynamic. Uh, I think it's uh, really exciting, I think, for them uh, to be able to experience, I think, different culture, different language, uh, you know, at a really early age. At the same time, what I like to do is sort of for them to retain a little bit of a core identity, you know, being both Chinese and American at the same time. 
I first uh, learned about blockchain and crypto when one of the companies I had Angel invested in had an ICO. And then that was when I first uh, started understanding about, you know, what fundraising on blockchain is. And then that was also the first time that I really sort of uh, started understanding uh, what it meant for startups that are building its business, that you can actually raise capital in addition from equity, you can actually use blockchain to raise capital and you can actually issue tokens in the form of crypto that actually gets traded where you know people uh, can use your token, um, not just uh, for investing purposes, but actually use it in the platform. That really you know, got me to start understanding you know, the use case of blockchain, not just a form for the distributed ledger for Bitcoin, but actually you can use it to raise capital and you can actually use it to engage with the community through crypto. Uh, and I think that's when I really you know, started um, going down the rabbit hole of, 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 of the industry that we're in today. Yeah. Having a new CEO in Wei lets us get our focus back into crypto, which is one of our main strengths. Wei also brings in a lot of experience uh, and knowledge in the, into the space. Uh, and it helps us a lot with uh, better decision making on in, in either product planning and uh, partnerships. Definitely, Wei has done it. Done it well, done it big. Before, in previous companies, he has held um, leadership positions in. And that, I believe, is a, it's both a source of inspiration to us uh, at Coins and also a big drive and challenge, right? To live up to that expectation and that vision, I guess, that he has for the company. Before I jumped into crypto, I actually led an acquisition of Grindr, which is the largest LGBTQ or la largest gay dating app in the world. And then I, I was actually actually served on the board and I was the vice chairman of that company for about three or four years. I kind of see a lot of similar trends. Even with crypto now, I think over the last few years, it's gaining more mentions in mainstream media um, and then more, I would say, acceptance. We really want to bring crypto and digital assets, I think, uh, mainstream here uh, in the Philippines. And then uh, I think two of the national sports are beauty pageants and basketball. We're really excited to partner with the PBA here. So we've become the official crypto and blockchain sponsor of both the PBA, uh, the Philippines Basketball Association, as well as the Miss Universe Philippines pageant. It gets our brand, the Coins brand, but also it gets sort of the, the wider you know, uh, crypto brand, the digital asset brand, uh, into a much bigger audience. But it also, I think, uh, allows us to open doors to, you know, go deeper in terms of how do we bring, you know, NFTs to these um, organizations? How can we help them to become more innovative in their product and their entertainment experience? And how do we basically, you know, potentially even bring additional revenue um, to their businesses and to their uh, participants? I've been playing basketball, I think, ever since I've sort of seen a basketball. Uh, I was too short, you know, uh, <laughs> to make it to any of the school teams. <laughs> so, so you know, that's just nature, I and mean, that's that's DNA, right? Like, my, <laughs> you know, that 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 I can't change. But I've just been playing it ever since. That was sort of like uh, coincided having a hoop uh, in my backyard, uh, luckily, and then also coincided with sort of just being able to watch. Uh, I think like the early Bulls teams with Michael Jordan. So I think that really sort of uh, you know I've liked the sport ever since. If Coins PH were a basketball player, uh, the, the player that I would go with is, uh, is Clay Thompson, <laughs> who's, uh, who's part of the Splash Brothers. If you look at the last like you know five or six years of a career, you know they were NBA champions for four or five straight years, right? And then over the last couple of years, uh, he's actually hurt. So he had basically he was out of the league and not playing basketball for almost two years. Co kind of like tr tracks coins <laughs> as a company. So we started off as being sort of the first you know leading crypto player uh, here in the Philippines. And it was actually, you know, like a lot of people that I talked to, you know, bought their first Bitcoin or bought their first, you know, crypto through coins. And then the last couple of years, you know, because of COVID and because of different management ownership, it basically took itself out of the crypto competition for a bit. And then now I think, you know, what I hope to build with coins is sort of, you know, with Clay coming back this year and then uh, and he contributed significantly, you know, and then won a championship again with the Warriors. <laughs> So that's what I hope to do with coins is that sort of, you know, when we come back now under sort of the re recommitted focus on crypto and blockchain and digital assets, sort of get back into that sort of championship mentality again. I am looking for mission driven entrepreneurs. I'm looking for people who are razor focused on what they hope to accomplish with their product, with their company, uh, with their solution. My expectation this season for Final Pitch Season 8, the Tech Edition, is actually to really, one, to showcase some of the talents that we have here. And then secondly, I think to create a new dialogue about the importance of tech and the importance of innovation and the importance of entrepreneurship. 
the value that it can add, I think not just to the entrepreneurs and their companies, but actually, you know, the products and the services that they can bring to a wider audience and to really, so I think, you know, drive economic growth for the wider country. Up next. The opportunity is celebrities do have a lot of items. We rarely see celebrities wear the same outfit twice, right? The business model, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The evidence suggests that you do not have a a scalable business here. Hello, investor judges. So, great pitches so far. We all lead very busy lives. Amor, I know that you have to leave momentarily, but we are bringing in someone who has been your partner. He is your co-founder in Geyser McClung. So I'd like to introduce to replace Amor at this moment in time, the co-founder of Geyser McClung, Brad Geyser. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. So Brad, welcome to the final pitch. So far, I've been hearing pitches with you here in the sidelines. You have given me a lot of feedback and I speak for everyone here. I'm very excited to hear what you have to say and how we can help the entrepreneurs here who will be pitching to you. I think there are a number here that would benefit greatly from your insight. All right. So with that, I'll call in the next startup. Next on stage is an entrepreneur who aims to provide an online platform for celebrities to sell their pre-loved items. Hey, Arvin. Hi, John. So Arvin, you work with a lot of celebrities. So your business is closely tied to, I guess, secondhand items that celebrities have let go of. So why this business? Well, I have been really a, an advocate of the environment. I really wanted to have a sustainable planet. I mean, for our future, right? I really wanted to have a business that could actually help the planet be sustainable for our future generation. So I'm excited really to pitch, and the final pitch, um, helping the environment at, at the same time and having a startup. So Arvin, you're up next. Good luck. Thank you, John. My name is Arvid Torres, founder of Celebrity Inbox, where we help celebrities sell their pre-love items online. And we are here today seeking for $1 million investment for post-money safe or convertible notes. Vanessa Ayog, paki-paki-screenshot na lang Vanessa Ayog. SSD, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, guys. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you so much. We noticed there are quite a number of celebrities that are doing that online, just like Miss Angeline Quinto, who recently went to Facebook Live to sell her pre love items. And this got us thinking, who else is doing this? Why are they doing it? And how are they doing it? Those initial questions led us to do some research and deep in the research, we have discovered a great opportunity and gained a very unique insight. The opportunity is celebrities do have a lot of items. We rarely see celebrities wear the same outfit twice, right? We have collaborated with more than 70 local celebrities. We have sold more than 2,000 items. And we have a revenue of $26,000 using only Instagram. So we buy items from celebrity currently for $6 and sell it for $10, giving us a profit margin of 40%. But we now have, can lower it down to $1 to $2 for items, giving us a profit margin of 80 to 90%. But just how big is the opportunity? Well, 25 items that were sold in auction already garnered $144 million. And we know Filipinos love our celebrities. And to top it off, secondhand industry, it's already a $27 billion industry. But how do we plan to meet the demand? That's why we are here. We're looking to partner with Insightful and Thoughtful Investor to help us launch our platform and also launch our two more revenue streams and also to target our income $1 for this year. Join us in connecting every fan and every celebrity through meaningful engagement, one celebrity gain box at a time. Thank you. So do you invest, do you have working capital, do you invest on the goods, you buy it from the celebrity? That's the strategy for now, to buy it from celebrities initially, but the long-term plan is to have it in consignment. It feels like you're doing a lot of work, 
just to sell one piece of item for $60. That's true, but that's just a, a foot in the door because that's uh, actually, go ahead. So, Typical, like the, the models that I've seen, like both either in the US or in, in China at least, is that they do have live streaming commerce, right? Where the celebrity is out there selling something, right? And they're selling thousand units of the same item, right? So that way there is scalability on the back end on the business, right? Whereas for this one, I don't see a scalable model on the back end because you're selling one item. Yes, you are true, and that's deliberate because that's part of the strategy. We are work. I mean, we are doing all those work for the celebrities because we know celebrities won't do that, and that's the difference with celebrity Greenbox and those those businesses that have already been successful. I think there's an unsaid here, which is why the celebrities are selling their used stuff online in the first place. Do they need the money? No. <laughs> no. They're doing this for engagement. If they go through Celebrity Green Box, because a lot of the value from the point of view of the celebrity evaporates in this model. So I, I want to understand how you build that back in. That's true. And initially, that the thought of like having those items from their favorite celebrities already good enough. But we thought of another way to engage those fans. That's why we'll be launching Designer Toys. This Designer Toys will give fans the chance to meet them in person. That's a completely different path to building a second-hand platform. Like, the business model, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't think the monetization engine works. If you did all this work and all you're doing is just selling $26,000 worth of stuff, right? But for an e-commerce business, then you basically have to sort of pivot a little bit. You've been at it a year, uh, and you have $26,000 in uh, revenue. So, the evidence suggests that you do not have a, a scalable business here. There's a specific communication style that you used, um, which is disassembly and diversion. When I asked you a specific question, you would acknowledge my question and then you would divert into something that didn't answer the question. The, the fear for us is when you have somebody who's in charge who dissembles and we go asking for a report on a regular basis, we're gonna be worried that we're not gonna get the straight story. You know, you're sitting on a treasure trove of celebrities. You got some, so I mean, just look at the numbers here. You got 76 celebrities in your portfolio with a cumulative 98 million followers. And then you have 13,000 followers on your celebrity green box Instagram platform. Because I think like, you know, the, the, there is oil there, just that, you know, you know, how do you dig it out? So that would be my advice. Yeah, you can actually come up with something like buy and sell, and then through influencer marketing, you can work on it, but definitely not just for celebrities. I think it's gonna be difficult in the long run when it comes to sustainability. Investors, thank you for your comments, and thank you. One of the investors said that I might be sitting in a treasure chest, but I really had to look deeper into the business and see how we can maximize the opportunity. That's not the kind of guy who gives you straight answers when you're asking for a yeah, piano. I agree. Fandom is huge, it's powerful, and it's very much untapped. He hasn't quite worked out how to make magic out of that economy yet. I, I liked. Uh, I like that you looked for the. You looked for the gold in it, though. I, th I think he. I think he's in love with celebrities. Up next. We're asking for 25 million pesos for 20% of our company to build our tech. What's the secret sauce of the technology? Because somehow no. my impression is everything's manual at the moment. Yeah, nothing. Next to Pitch is a former child star turned entrepreneur, pitching a marketing research and insight solutions company. Hey, Jason. Hi, John. So Jason, interesting fact okay. I learned about you. When you were four years old, you won a title. <laughs> so you were That's My Boy uh, from this show, It Bulaga. That was way back in the 90s. Yeah, that's so. embarrassingly true. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that all about? Yeah, man, I, I was a kid, was watching TV. It's the first time I realized that when I watch something, I really want to do it. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I was watching it, I told my mom, Mom, I want to join that show. I said, 
but you don't have any talent and you don't look good. <laughs> but I said, no, please let me join. So, okay, we joined. <laughs> and so, you won. And you won. Yeah, we won for a couple of times. Yeah, had a couple of TV shows. But yeah, wow. it was a good ride as a kid, man. Wow, so you were a child star? No, not really. <laughs> I, I think it's more of like a child, I don't know, what's smaller than a star or something like that. So, from Eat Bulaga to the final pitch. This is your evolution as an entrepreneur. That's a good evolution, I think, man. <laughs> Jason, we're rooting for you. Good luck. Thank you very much, John. Hi, investors. Uh, I'm Jason from Hustle PH, and I'm here to ask for 25 million pesos for 20% stake of our Market Insights company. Market insighting in the Philippines has not changed since the 70s. The questions that are being asked are somehow similar. Now, market share, market availability, product awareness, all these things. But the difference is, right now, because of the quick shifts in markets, companies want the answers faster. So, if you're a company with a question, we have a platform, hustleph.com, no? and we have 200,000 hustlers and growing every day. You just go there, no? and then ask your question, and then target your market segment, and then we could give you the insights quickly. We create, well, that's our tagline, market insights to market intelligence. But, but the thing is, we are 100% customizable. When I say that, it's because our 200,000 hustlers, we know what type of e-wallet they're using. We also know what broadband provider they're using and what they are shifting to. We also know what are the available products in the Sari Sari stores nearby where they live or supermarkets where they live. And we're also three times faster because everything is online. We do it very fast. A project which is three to six months, we do it two to four weeks. And then we are 80% cheaper. So our intelligent solutions, as I told you, we solve product availability, how products are performing, brand health, how to best communicate your product, and well, feedback, consumer feedback. Um, so again, we're asking for 25 million pesos for 20% of our company to build our tech because right now we are a web platform from an app and we need to fix our database right now. It's all rudimentary Excel, it's so difficult to do. And then manpower, we are expanding our operations capacity so we can get more projects and marketing so that we can get a foothold in the Philippines, get at least a million hustlers by mid-2023. I'm an analyst before in Nielsen, so I know the trade. I came from FMCG, so I also know how they think. From telco in brands, so I know how brands think. Um, I was an executive, so I also know how conglomerates think. And I also started a startup, Mr. Speed, in 2017. I had an exit last year, 2021. So yeah, that's our company, Hustle PH. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, so for the question and answer, I'm gonna call one of our partners, Carl Chung here. He's our head of sales. Hello, investors. So if I understand things correctly, um, when you say hustlers, these are actually users of your website, yes. right? So um, given that you have no control over like who's going to register or sign up, how are you going to ensure reliability of your data? So first and foremost, our first, we have filtered tasks. So these filtered tasks are tasks that they need to do just to check if they're human at all. Number two, for example, Unilever asks, okay, we want to ask curly-haired women, you know, or whatever. So they need to take a picture of their hair, <laughs> if it's really curly. You have a bunch of hustlers, basically like mechanical Turks, I suppose. Um, what's the secret sauce of the technology? Because somehow no. my impression is everything's <laughs> manual at the moment. Yeah, n nothing. So r right now I think to be, to be very transparent, there is no secret sauce in the technology here. It is more on how it is being operated. So the hustlers increased immediately because, well, we give them money and then we give them money on time. We get clients easily because we understand them. I understand them, the team understands them. We understand what they want. What's your client retention rate, do you know? Everyone is still having projects for us. So we still do not have a client who has less than two projects. At least just from a quarterly basis, what's the renewal rate you're seeing from the clients? Um, so the real renewal rate is around 20%. But if for the full capacity, if we accept all the projects that they want us to do, it would be probably 60 to 70. From an investment perspective, uh, uh, I'd like to invest $50,000 into your business. We can negotiate sort of the terms uh, on the equity part, uh, and also we can dig a little bit uh, on sort of where the uh, you know platform integration can come in. Are, are there others? I guess for me, uh, while there are like big question mark in the technology on my end, um, I would bet on you as a founder. 
Uh, so I guess in that sense, uh, I would like to match uh, also uh, ways offer. I'm more than happy to offer uh, another 50,000 uh, if you would you know, be open uh, for me to help you guys also, especially on the technology side. I like these, these two guys as well. We have technology uh, that you could leverage off of, uh, particularly how you're going to pay these 200,000 hustlers. And, and as that scales, right, um, you know, you're talking about like 2% of the company. I just don't think that that's worthwhile, right? So yeah, so I'm going to pass. I think you're in good hands. Those are kind words, man. Everything that's kind right now is really, really appreciated because I'm exploding and nervous. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe let me think about this again. <laughs> Maybe if it was in the fifty to one hundred thousand uh, dollar territory and I could walk away with ten percent, then I might be interested. Okay. Um, thank you, judges. We really appreciate all your uh, all your thoughts and all your comments and everything. Um, if it's all right with you, we'll take a call first. Now, thank you very much. We'll come back. Okay, so pare ganito. So we had offers actually. Si Paymongo cha si Coins pre handa sila magbigay. It para lang clear ah, ang bibigay lang nila pare. Tik 50k USD. Tapos pag usapan yung equity. Pare, let's say si Coins at si Paymongo. Very strategic partner yan. Yun nga eh. Parang parang mangyayari daw. Originally medyo down around siya. But since this is technically your series A, at least meron ka ng solid valuation. Right now we don't have any solid valuation. Okay, sige, sige. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, first and foremost, we are very, very, very excited for all the offers that, that were given. I, I don't know how to counter something that is open. You said that 50K and let's talk about, you know, the equity afterwards. So I don't know how to counter that, but that is something that we are really open from you guys, both of you, um, because, well, we, we really would love your tech. Jason. So, uh, so from, from Coins, uh, Paymongo and UBX, I think the three ah, of you us... you also have an offer for us. Yeah, so we're putting a, uh, a unified term sheet on the table, which is uh, $150,000 uh, uh, for, I would say, like, you know, you can call it your Series A, you know, investment. Uh, and then we would like to get 30% uh, equity in the business. Um, is it okay for you guys to make it 20%? Or is it really, yeah, because yeah. you want 10% So I, I'm just gonna come up. This is for me, so I like, look, I like the idea of us going, doing something together here so that you get something close to the amount that you actually need. For me, it would have to be because it's all together. I see. And for me, less than 10% is is not worth it. Okay. Okay. Um, we have heard all your offers and we are accepting them. Come hustle with us. <laughs> yes. Right. I, I, I love what you do, you know, uh, solving problems for companies. And right now we were just given by three big awesome companies the war chest to fight that battle more and we love that fight man we love solving problems what we can expect to do in the future is that we would be able to shift back to an app model which we started with we want our users to have the best experience possible congratulations cool <laughs> you guys bought yourself a research yeah. company i think he's an awesome founder that's like my bottom line Founder? Yeah. Yes. Is it the founder that you... Yeah, way he convinced me. I... <laughs> yeah. 2% carry, brother. <laughs> you know, yeah. just to help you guys. You know what? Um, we can be your clients. Yeah, we can be your clients. <laughs> we can yeah. be your clients yeah. just to help you guys. Yeah. Exactly. Next time on The Final Pitch, foodpreneur investor judge Avin Ong shares his humble beginnings and his journey to building over 250 restaurants and cafes in his portfolio. And day one of the pitches continues. We are founded to create an integrated learning management system which will adapt to what our school needs. I don't think you need 500,000. I don't think I'm the right investor because to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of face-to-face -face learning.